So thank you, Andy, for this presentation. And as you said, you know, FiCloud is, of course, highly secure with all the security features that we have and also is very simple and easy to use. So let's start with the um, user interface, uh, interface. So this is the user interface, which means that once uh, the user have ac has access to his FiCloud, then he can connect to uh, through the web interface. So of course you can change the logo, you can put your own logo and your own background, and also we support many languages, Arabic, French, English, of course, if you have, if you are dealing with, um, you know, international customers or international partners, uh, multilingual solution is also important. So uh, once I log into my FiCloud, uh, I will be able to access uh, uh, four main folders. I mean, so my files, which is my personal storage space, and then we have team folders, which is really useful when it comes to team collaborations. And as you said, Andy, you have also the network shirt that you can integrate with your Windows file server or your company server. And then we have the shirt with me. Of course, just to focus on the security and the compliance aspect of FiCloud. So in FiCloud, as an admin or as a manager or as a decision maker, you decide who can access your FiCloud. So here I am an employee, internal employee, and I have access to some team folders. But of course, I don't have all the same permissions within those folders. For example, if I check the Salesforce team folder, I can see that I have only the read only permission. I cannot edit, I cannot sync, I cannot share. And if I check the sales team folder, see all the permissions that I have. So you have these permissions depending on the permissions given to you by the admin or the manager, you will be able to perform some actions. So this is from the user interface. And again, this is really you know, easy to use. We have an excellent you know, feedback from our, especially government users. They, don't, they like FiCloud because they don't spend you know, a lot of time you know, trying to share, trying to edit, or trying to collaborate. Everything is simple. Uh, you, don't know to, you, don't know, you don't have to spend a lot of time uh, to, to learn about FiCloud. So just before, moving to the admin interface because we don't have um, a lot of time. Let me show you a quick uh, sharing options in PyCloud. Okay, so remember, because I have the permission to share, this is important. So I have the permission to share, I can share a folder. So in PyCloud, you have two types of sharing or two sharing options, if we can say that. So you have the public share here and we have the private share. Many of our customers, especially in the government sector, financial institution sector, et cetera, they don't, they disable the public share. They want their user only to share privately. So this is the first point when it comes to security because you decide whether it will be a private share or a public share. This is important because when you share privately, you know who can access your folder, which means that I can share it internally with my colleague Wael, for example, here. I can add Wael. Wael is our, uh, my internal colleague, so I can add him to, to the share. And I can also share it external to our customer, uh, to our company. For example, I can add Andy, for example, just a random email like uh, Ireland, for example, .com. So as you can see, Andy is not registered. Let's say Andy is a partner or client, then I need to share with him a, day, a, a file of folder. So Andy will receive an email notification saying that Hakim has shared with you an important documentation. So once Andy will connect to his file cloud, remember Andy is not an internal employee, he is an external uh, user. He will see only shared with me, okay? With the permissions I have given to him. So he will be able to uh, download or not, or to share or not, et cetera, et cetera. So this is important within FireCloud. So this is from the user interface. There are a lot of security features to, to share securely, whether internally or externally. This is the first one. Also, we have a good feature, which is workflow automation that will help you, you know, secure your data and also be compliant. For example, you can create some, uh, uh, automatism, if we can say that, on, on a share activity. 
Let's say, for example, you, you are saying to your file cloud, if a share is created or updated, let's say on this path, for example, in these all files, let's go to team folder and let's say to this uh, sales team, for example. Okay. So I'm saying to file cloud, if a share is created or updated within the sales team folder, I would like, I need a share approval. Who is gonna approve this share? Let's say Henry, our manager. Okay, which means that if a share is created, then Henry needs to approve this activity or this this share. Okay, so you have from the user interface, you have this these features. You know when it comes to um, sharing, collaborating, editing documents. Remember. It depends on the permissions given to you by the admin. Okay, this is important. So now let's go back to the admin interface. Okay, again to the admin, and I will show you the different points presented by by Andy. Okay, acceptance of services. Okay. So really, um, quick on the dashboard admin dashboard you have here you know a quick statistic about your system so you see how many users you have you have the full users the guest users and the limited users this is important because you decide who can access your file cloud whether you give you give them a full access or guest access or limited access so everything is uh, it depends on the permissions even by the admin or the decision maker. Okay. Then we have also an important point when it comes to compliance and security is the access locations. Within your file cloud, you can, I'm accessing from Algeria, I'm connected from Algeria, and within your file cloud, you can create a rule saying that I would like only users from Ireland to connect to my file cloud. If someone from France or from Spain try to connect to fi your file cloud, your system, he will not be able to do so. And this can be done through the DLP. Remember the data lake prevention presented by, by Andy. You can limit a specific or certain IP addresses in order for within your system. So I would like only users from Ireland or from another country to connect to my file cloud. Okay, this is first point. Also regarding the audit logs. So within your file cloud, you are able to so it's coming yes so as an admin you can see uh, what is happening within your system so for example let's say i would like to check all the deleted actions within my system so i can see that hakim uh, deleted just now a file uh, as an admin or hakim has an issue i can see that hakim has an issue with his sync application because it is all uh, always failed. So I can contact Hakim and see what is happening. Or, you know, within the audit log, you can also check, you know, for example, uh, actions by specific user. For example, I can see all the actions where we're ill is uh, concerned. So I can see which IP address, which agent, etc., etc. So you have this also, this audit log that is really appreciated by, you know, our Gov and financial uh, um, customers. Okay, so now let's start talk about the governance port. Um, so this is important because as Andy said, um, with the governance port, you, can, you will be compliant or you will meet compliance uh, without any, you know, uh, difficulties, if we can say that. So you have this dashboard where you can see, or, you know, the retention policy, the data leak prevention rules that you have, uh, you know, the compliance um, that you are, you met, you know, uh, regarding GDPR, HIPAA, ITAR, etc. So uh, you can, for example, from here create a policy. Uh, for example, in order to meet, uh, to meet with, uh, you know, let's say. Um, Higher HIPAA requirement. You know there is a requirement in HIPAA that say that um, you uh, you need to to retain files for six years. So you can you can create a retention policy directly from here, 
and uh, set some, you know, um, some rules in order to meet some compliance, for example, HIPAA or um, ITAR, et cetera. So this is a retention policy. And of course, you know, doing this webinar, we, uh, we cannot show you all the, um, all the different steps, but we can have, you know, all the stations, you know, uh, configuration station where we can show we can show you um, some uh, some some configuration and also to help you configure your your file cloud during a free trial during a test uh, period. Um, then we have the small data leak prevention, and as Andy said, it works with the smart classification. So you have smart classification, and you have smart DLP. With those features, you can protect, um, you know, sensitive files from being uh, downloaded or from being shared externally. For example, let's say you have a file that contains social security number or credit card number or driving license number. So with smart classification, you can uh, create um, a pattern group here and depending on your objective by setting, for example, social security number, credit card number, anything like that. And FightLot will automatically classify those documents that contains uh, such information, for example, social security number, anything like that, and then apply a DLP rule on those documents, which means that if a user, even if he has the permission to share, is trying to download or is trying to share a sensitive file protected by a DLP rule, then he cannot do so, of course. And as an admin, you will receive a notification that Hakim or Wael or Andy has violated rule XYZ on a DLP rule. So this is also important when it comes to you know compliance and protecting users protecting data etc um another point i'm checking you know the point discussed by or presented by andy um we have also the compliance center and the compliance center um enables you to check which regulatory requirement your system meets and which it fails to meet for example here we have ITAR, we have HIPAA, and we have GDPR. I can see that if I click on GDPR, and I can see that it is enabled, so the system will give me, um, you know, some issues. For example, I'm, I don't, I have an issue with Article 32. Okay, I need to configure the storage encryption in order to meet this rule. Okay. So from here, I need, so the system will give me, you know, uh, the, the steps in order to, to enable storage encryption and for me to meet the Article 32 uh, rule. So with the Compliance Center, you have a, a complete vision on, on the compliance, uh, on the different regulations, um, uh, whether it is GDPR, HIPAA for the US, and ITAR for the also for the US, uh, we have also, you know, as Andy said, you know, you have the online version and you have the server version. So whether you go with both of, with uh, the solution with the server, you host completely your data. You have a complete control over your data, and many of our government clients. Um, they are. They have chosen the server version, and they are happy. Of course, we know they are happy. Why? Because they are expanding to other departments, and we have a lot of customers coming from public cloud providers to fight cloud in order to meet data regulation, data residency regulation, data sovereignty, and as Andy showed us with within the Irish government, we have an excellent reputation when it comes to uh, file sharing solution. It is simple to use, but it is highly secure and you have a complete control over your data. This is important. And we have the same success in North America, in Asia, and in the Middle East as well. We have large ministries using FileCloud and we can say that thousands of users are using FileCloud to edit, to share, and to collaborate securely on, you know, uh, on a daily basis. Uh, so this is important uh, when it comes to compliance, security, etc. So as you can see here, you know, a lot of features are available. 
which means a lot of value can be provided by Cyclone. And that's why we provide a free trial period. You can test Cyclone during uh, two weeks or one month. And during the trial period, you have a complete access to our different teams. We can have configuration sessions. We can have also technical sessions in order to help you um, configure certain functionalities and also to help you to show you how Cloud can meet your objectives. And today, as Andy said, a lot of customers, financial institutions, healthcare organization, education, universities, government are using FiCloud. They're coming from public cloud providers to FiCloud, of course, because of, you know, we have uh, an excellent pricing uh, strategy and also because of, uh, you know, uh, compliance and easy to use and um, security, et cetera. So uh, I need to stop here, but of course, as you can see, there are a lot of features. We can discuss this of, uh, during other uh, sessions. We are, uh, I believe Andy and Michael will share some, some links and some emails in order to, to have all the sessions. So guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them, whether about you know, configuration or compliance or security, uh, we'd be happy to help you and to answer them. Thank you.